So welcome back everyone, Mike here. This evening I'm just kind of sticking around close to the house here. I didn't get home from work till kind of late. It gets dark in about 45 minutes or an hour. Uh, I did manage to get the driveway fixed up again. It's kind of like that movie uh, Groundhog Day. You remember that movie? I do something, it gets washed out, torn up, I do it again. Just kind of keep repeating myself. But I have a lot to do around here. Uh, let's see, three weeks from Saturday, yeah, three weeks from Saturday, we have our annual 4th of July party here, and there will be about 400 people here, and I have a ton of stuff to get ready for that party. Uh, I have all sorts of things to do, but you know what? I like to stay busy. It's a good reason to get up every day and just kind of tear into things, uh, but we'll really be going at it here over the next couple weeks, getting ready for the party, getting everything fixed up. I got all sorts of stuff going on, but I am going to take some vacation time from work, so I think it should all work out pretty well. But before I get started with today's video, the topic of today's video, if you didn't see yesterday's video, I'm going to put that up above here. I uh, used a uh, Rio Link camera for the first time, and I have it set up on a tree, just kind of a temporary setup to see how it works, and it is fantastic. It works off of 4G, and I had it set, it has really good night vision. And all last night, I'm sitting there getting ready to go to bed, my phone would beep, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, check it out. I had to end up turning off the notifications. I was watching deer all night till like 11.30, quarter to 12. So I just shut it off because I had to get up at 4.30. Uh, but I'll show you a little bit of footage from just about an hour ago up there. Those deer can be nasty, can't they? That one didn't want the other one anywhere near the corn pile. But I'm gonna get that set up in maybe a better location. I kinda of learned a lot about it just last night, how far away to set it, you know, all sorts of things. But it's a lot of fun, and like I said, I'll be using that thing for more of a uh, game watcher, but come deer season, I'm probably gonna get another one, maybe even two more, and set them up at different places where I know people enter the property, uh, and I can kinda of keep my eye on things a little bit better. But anyway, the title of today's video is I have a question for RK tractor owners. Now, before I ask that question, I'm gonna answer two questions. The first one is, everybody always asks me if I could only have one of these three tractors, which one it would be. And if you're new to our channel, I'll kind of bring you up to speed here. Uh, I partnered with RK Tractors about a year and a half ago. They reached out to me and they provide me with three different tractors to use here on our property. It gets them exposure, uh, it gets me more tractors to do stuff around here, and it also gives me good content for videos because along with the tractors, I got about a dozen different attachments. Uh, box blades, land planes, tillers, discs, call to packer, brush hog, all sorts of stuff. So it makes for good content and it also really helps me out around here. I can get a lot more stuff done. And what's really nice is I don't have to switch attachments a whole bunch. Like for example, I was just using the box blade on the RK55. I have the brush hog on the RK37. I'm gonna hop on that in a few minutes and do a little brush hogging. But anyway, so that's the, the backstory on that. But between the RK24, the RK37, and the RK55, uh, I would have to say if I could only have one, it would definitely be the RK37. Don't get me wrong, I really like Sherman, the little RK24, and I love RK55. It's, uh, it's a beast, it is. And for skidding out really big logs, uh, pulling that seven foot box blade up these steep hills and the trails, things like that, great tractor, but the RK37 is a really good fit uh, for me here on our property. It just seems to be about the right size, has plenty of power. Uh, I lift heavy, heavy logs with that grapple on there, the granite grapple, and that is a six foot grapple. I think really I should have a five footer on that tractor, but I run the six footer, and that one was for the RK55, but I use it on the 37 all the time. It's great for you know getting in and around trees out in the woods, and I do like the shuttle shift. I've always been a uh, hydrostat kind of guy. Shuttle shift, uh, I really like it, I do. So that answers that question. If I can only keep one, it would be the RK37. The next question I keep getting asked, and honestly more frequently, is what's gonna happen when this two year agreement is up with RK tractors? Because we're about, I think almost about a year and a half into it. And uh, what to tell you the truth, well you know what, I'm gonna brush hog a little bit right now and we'll get back to that.
So here's the thing, Mr. Mike Morgan needs my help. He needs help getting the RK37 pulled out. You're welcome. That's what I'm here for. Just to help. And there's deer watching all this. So that was actually the first time I've ever gotten stuck in a tractor and technically I don't think I was really stuck. I probably could have pushed myself out with a grapple but uh, I didn't want to let go of that big hunk of mess that I had uh. down there. Every time I mow by there it just kind of keeps creeping out and there's vines and all that poison oak and all that mess on there. So I thought got another tractor here, got this quality operator right here to come save the day. I did. And by the way, 
<laughs> I would not recommend. I just hooked up to the back of the brush hog on that. If I knew it wouldn't take much at all to get it out. What happened were the front tires just dropped down in a hole and uh, I didn't want to keep pawing away at it. I hit the differential lock, all four started spinning. I was just going to kind of dig in. So I figured to get Melissa help me out and we're done. And you didn't want to let go of it. That's kind of like someone that's holding on to their ice cream cone and falls. <laughs> I yeah. couldn't catch myself. I didn't, I it's didn't hard to push that thing over, you know? You don't want to let go of it. Or the last piece of pizza. Yeah. <laughs> I love the, um, I took a couple pictures of all that viney stuff in the grapple. And it made a nice little arch. At our neighbor's wedding last year, they had a beautiful arch made. I don't think it was out of poison oak though. No, but very similar. We could have renewed our vows. Yeah. <laughs> so before I got stuck, I think I was talking about how I think this partnership has worked out pretty good for both of us. It's gotten RK tractors a lot of exposure. It's helped me out around here with uh, all the different attachments and the tractors, and I'm able to get a lot of things done. But as far as where we go from here, uh, I think this agreement's up in about six or seven months, something like that. I'm not sure. I really don't know the answer to that. We've been kind of talking and kicking some ideas around. We don't really know where we're gonna go moving forward. Uh, it's just kind of hard to quantify how it's working for everybody. Like I have no idea where my channel would be at this point without the RK tractors. RK tractor has no idea where their sales would be without outdoors with the Morgans. So I had a question for you guys, for RK tractor guys out there, and I'm just curious, how many of you that have bought an RK tractor found them here and, and you know, based your decision, or at least partially based your decision on buying your tractor from how you see I use these things around the property. I'm just curious, you know, let me know in the comments. And also, I'll post something on our Facebook page, or actually, Melissa will post something on our Facebook page asking that question. And if you don't mind, submit some pictures there in the comments on that Facebook page, you know, showing us your tractor on your property and what you do with it. And if you don't do Facebook, you could send them to uh, outdoorswiththemorgans at gmail.com. So to kind of review what we talked about today, if I could only choose one of the three tractors to keep, it would definitely be the RK37. I like the other two a whole bunch, but I think the 37 is a perfect fit for our property and my needs here. The other thing we talked about is what's gonna happen when this partnership ends in two years. It's a really good question. I don't know the answer, but I do know everything always just kind of works out and everything will be fine no matter what happens. And lastly, if you bought an RK tractor, were you, you know, did you first find them here on Outdoors with the Morgans? And if so, did that help influence your purchase? I'm just curious to know, and I'll be honest, it'll help me out trying to quantify how all this is working out for them, for me, things like that. And post a picture on our Facebook page or send us an email or however you want, or just let me know in the comments and I'd really appreciate that. I think that's about all I wanted to cover today. Yeah, but anyway, if you enjoy these video, please. Remember that Melissa pulled Mike out. <laughs> and click subscribe, comment, like, share, and forget about seeing her pull me out. Thanks.